to Officer of the Day, six Officer Candidates coming aboard, sir. Which is the nerve centre of the submarine. This is the calculator which assists them in carrying out attacks. And this is the attack periscope, which is followed by the after periscope. What raises the periscope, Chief? Is it electrics or hydraulics? Hydraulics. Well, because it's more reliable. That's it. And quieter. This is a tea conversion, isn't it? That's right. I visited one in Malta. The captain's a friend of my father's. He's bound to get through tomorrow. One of those old naval families. Lucky devil. Hey, what are you keeping this little compartment then? 27 of the crew, son. So what's going to happen to us tomorrow then? You start off in the gym. Now, everything between these two white lines is water. And what we've got to do, we've got to get the wounded man in the stretcher. I can't hear him, sir. We've got to get the wounded man in the stretcher from this bank of the river to the other side. And we've only got eight minutes to do it in. <laughs> Three of us ought to get over there right away, so the other three can get the wounded man in the stretcher onto the square spar. <laughs> Take it easy, old boy, Jack. He's human, you know. Steady, now, steady. Keep the weight on him now. Steady. One minute to go now, number six. Eight minutes. It's not too bad. Watch out for the civvy headmaster there. Well, if they keep this up, we'll all be through by tea time. Yeah, we can all catch a 421 train. yourself down. I suppose being a W, you're used to being tail end, Charlie, aren't you? Um, yes, sir. Well, I imagine the chaps outside have told you a little about what goes on in here, haven't they? No, sir. Well, did nobody stay back and keep you company? No, sir. The blighters. Very fond of the outdoor life, and I've always liked the sea. Mm -hmm. Well, a job in office, you know, it didn't appeal to me. Uh, sailing? Well, where do you do your sailing? Oh, my uncle, up in Oliad. He's got a GP sailing dinghy. I go up there about twice a year for a week and sail in it. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us anything about the ships we, we have in the Navy? Well, there's aircraft carriers, uh -huh. commando ships. Now, what do they do? Oh, they carry Marines. You, you know, amphibious and helicopters. Mm -hmm. Any other ships? Uh, battleships. Battleships? Now, Wyndham, a straight question to start with. Do you reckon you worked hard your last two years at school? Well, I tried to, sir. What about the mathematics? I failed in July, but I did pass in December, sir. Oh, yes, so you did. Grade B. Well, that's good enough. Now, you say you collect coins. Yes, sir. What sort of coins? We all collect coins. Well, I'm uh, collecting a set called Victoria Jubilee set, sir. Dated Isn't that rather a curious hobby for a young man like yourself, who's joining the Navy for an adventurous life? I've always found it very interesting, sir. Now, what about this scholarship of yours, this Sir John Howell scholarship? I won it at Clanfinian, sir, before I left my press. I see an entrance scholarship. Yes, sir. Is, uh, is it given by a, a benefactor of the school? Uh, it's given by Sir John Owl, sir. Well, that's what I thought. Do you know who he is? Um, or was? Well, I'm not sure, sir, if he was an atheist or an agnostic. I, th I think I'm getting a bit muddled up, sir. But I do know he was a great author. Now, I need to show on the sea cadets. Yes, sir. Uh, have you been any holiday trips or visits with them? Oh, yes, sir. I, I went down last year to Tavistock for the annual camp. We visited 4-2 commando unit and uh, went on the Tarzan course, sir. Well, how do you make out there? Well, at the end, I'm afraid I fell down uh, off the rope into the river. <laughs> but I enjoyed it all the same, sir. Well, that's good. Fine. Well, and I see you put down engineering officer as your first choice and seaman as your second. Yes, sir. And there's no trouble with your eyesight at all? No, sir. Well, now, look, I'm a seaman officer. You just tell me why you think the engineering branch is better. Well, well, no offence, sir. Yes, go on. Go ahead. 
Well, if the engineers didn't work the ship, uh, well, what would there be for the seamen to do? I liked my talk with this chap. Very intelligent, a comparatively humble home, but it's decent. They're proud of his getting to university. An unusual character. There's more to him than's on the surface. I thought he did very well when the Admiral challenged him. Now, come on, Appleby. You sell yourself to us. What's your proudest achievement? Something you've done really well. Something convinces us the Navy can never get on without you. Well, um, that Easter expedition, sir. It had been snowing for three days, and the Army cadets, the arduous training lot, well, they'd given it up. But, uh, but we stuck it out. Well, actually, we thought we were pretty tough. He's a sticker. He's got good A-levels, maths and physics. He's an ideal engineer. But can you see him as a naval officer, sir? We aren't here to find officers, you know. We're looking for civilians we can turn into officers. It seemed to me his motivation was so shaky. The Navy's the elite, really, isn't it? Of the services, and... Well, I'd like to be in the elite. Why do you think you're qualified for this elite of yours? Well, I'm keen on sailing. I've had a boat ever since I can remember. And we've always had naval officers in the family. My stepfather's Vice Admiral Connor. And I think he'd be very good in the Foreign Office. He's got an amazing grip on world affairs. I think there's real calibre there, despite his lardy dar attitude. I think he's just kidding himself he wants to be a naval officer. Oh, what a cock-up. If only I could have found one bright thing to say. I bet they hated me. I like him. I gave him six for his school report and six for the gym. And I was particularly impressed by his motivation. I think when the heat's on, sir, this boy will do very well. Thank you, Bill. Mr. Crichton? He'll get his two A-levels all right. He's not great academically, but he's good on personal relationships. I like the way you said, no offence, sir, when you put him under a bit of pressure. It came out so naturally. Yes, it did. So he's on six for me. Well, school says possibly a prefect in due course. I think they may have some doubts because possibly he's been an awkward customer. He has a strong personality, they say, stands out in his form. Now, he may have his rough edges, but this lad's got quality. Of course, he may never set the Thames on fire. All the same, I think he's a jolly sound hand. Well, now, before I sum up, let's hear your views, George. Well, it's the all-roundness that impresses me. I mean, six for everything, what more do you want? I liked him as a boy. I liked him sailing with his uncle in the GP. I liked his camp at Tavistock. I liked him falling in the river. <laughs> I thought a perfectly natural, good, all-round solid citizen. And if we can't make him into a good officer, then heaven help the lot of us. <laughs> Jakes? Chief? You've got a sport shirt in this drawer instead of a civilian shirt. I'm sorry, Chief. You've seen a copy of this kit to lay out photograph. Why isn't yours the same? Well, I thought it would be more convenient if... You thought. There's only one way to do things here, and that's the Navy's way. Start! Hell! Start quick! Hell! Hold your head up! Lift! We go! That first six weeks in the college, we certainly put them through it. Fairly rigorous basic training, their lordships call it. My son went through this lot. They tear you apart that first half term, he said. Hold your head up, Get these arms straight. Get that arm straight. Wherever they go, they always feel two minutes adrift. And in the wrong place anyway. And all the time we're at them to keep themselves smart. Treat them mean and keep them keen, we say. Sir, talk to me. Cadet Owen reporting, sir. Have you been picked up for a haircut, Owen? No, sir. Well, you have as from now. We have to get them fit and keep them fit. They've got to be, to be able to cope with what's ahead for them. We treat them like men, or intelligent human beings anyway. Give them what responsibility we can at this stage. They aren't at school anymore training for a lifetime job. They've got to find out the hard way, learn to cope for themselves.
they learn to take it. It's a rotten day, and the Admiral's taken a long time over his inspection. The whole parade's been at attention for ten minutes. My lads are worn out anyway. Feel sorry for themselves. Have it still. Don't sway. Still. <coughs> Charming. Anyone else with TB, fall out. So you make a little joke to keep their spirits up. Old-fashioned, but it works. My boy said, you don't see the funny side at first. It's all too confusing, overwhelming. Then you suddenly get what it's all about. They're breaking you down to build you up again. Better. So he said... One and two and three and steady! Mr. Chairman, ready, steady! After a few weeks, you can watch them get it. You don't have to keep picking them up anymore. They keep themselves smart, like officers ought to be. They've got self-respect. Don't look like terrified rabbits anymore. They get a bit of fizz. Not cheeky, but, well, they show a bit of dash. Left, commence. One, two, one, two. Daddy, that's not a chest exercise. <laughs> Don't laugh, your turn, I'll come up here. That's not a chest exercise. Why point it in? Everybody else did exactly the same victimization. Up, two, three, over, two, three, cut. Calling the timing. Over. After six weeks, they can feel the difference. Now they know, and we know they know. And they know we know they know. It's beginning to happen. Suffering Harry Harrys, you are naval officers. In 12 months' time, I will be saluting you and calling you sir. Take your flaming fingers out. And then, with that first six weeks under their belts, they're away. blind pilotage run up into Portsmouth Harbour. Course 015, speed 15. One cable to wheel over. No five cables. The wheel over mark's still well ahead of us. And steady, if you don't order course now, you're going to be aground. Now what you're doing is taking this... This part of our uniform here, demonstration you shows you tropical gear. This is what you would wear if you were the officer of the day in your ship in the West Indies. An all-white uniform suit with white buckskin shoes. For drinks in Government House, you would wear tropical mess undress to meet the Governor's daughter and tell her all about your sister in the Wrens. So this flag signal tells the fleet to dress ship in honour of a visiting French admiral. Now if you take away the spelling flag, we are now telling the fleet to air all their bedding and hang out all their dirty washing. Well, where do you reckon we ought to be? Just over Bosom Hill Farm, sir. Any idea where we are? I think we're over the college, sir. I seem to have made an error. Yes, you seem to. They all wear the same uniform, learn the same sort of stuff, do the same drill. But they're all individuals. Character and leadership, that's what we're after. There's hundreds of ways of bringing it out. Competition, sailing, racing, expeditions across Dartmoor. Some of the lads show it right away. Some of them take a bit of time before they're sure they've got it. What in hell's eating you? Can't sleep. You're telling me. Just my luck getting you. I'd rather share with anyone else, even Harris. Harris's feet smell. Yes, but they do it quietly. What is it? Get it off your chest, for Lord's sake. Alistair, have you ever wondered what would happen later on if you told somebody to do something and they just wouldn't? Never thought of it. Yes, but suppose they just said go and get stuffed. In your case, they'd probably be right. What sort of help you are. Oh, forget it. Think about tomorrow. We've got a race to win. One more. One minute more. Well. Off me. Off me, you steaming nit. You're right to worry. Character and leadership couldn't even lead the Dagman and Girl Pipers. Honestly, Alistair, I'm sure I heard oh, you say shut up. Me. You'd better come in the first 19th tomorrow or we've had the divisional cup. It's a damn good job you know them all. Fifteen miles. 
We could make the farmhouse by three. If we get a rig of them, we could do it by half two. We'll be lucky. Cheers. Okay, that was the quarry. Okay, Brace up, George. Stop hobbling. Hey, wait a bit. I think I heard shouting. I'm sure there's someone out there. Look, we don't want to be stuck out here all night, do we? Come on, let's have another go. Help! I heard it again, didn't you? You're crazy, Steve. Come well, on. We've got to go back and look. Honestly, Steve. Well, I'll go on my own, then. We're not allowed to split up. Come with me. Hello. Oh, hello. You lost two. Who are you lot? Mary and all the angels, aren't we? From Poplar. Choir out in. Expedition, do you mind? Got any fags? No, sorry. Do you know them all? Yeah. Used to visit me dad here. On his holidays. Six years. Mm. He ain't your mum. I don't like the look of him. Ugly little creep, isn't he? I really don't think we ought to hang about here. Look, our farmhouse isn't too far away. How far? An hour or two, maybe. We can't take it too fast, not with these little ones, all right? I'll carry this one, you take the other. No, nah, better not. Better stay put. Anyway, Puffin Billy's gone for help. Puffin Billy? Mr Chipping, the choir master. He doesn't know where we are. Just up, uh, up over the hill there. Yes, yes, yes. Just up over there, about two miles up there. What direction did he go in? I don't know. He just said stay put till he got back. But these kids will never last a night out here. We've got to get moving right away. Come on, let's get going. Not your Nelly, mate. There's not much I can do about it at the moment, but when my cadets come back off the moor, we'll get them together and organise a search party. There it is! Come on, get a move on! Ah, stow it. My blisters have got blisters. It's Barmy, I tell you! I ain't getting lost all over again! If that kid pegs out, it'll be your fault, and I wouldn't be you. Come on, lads, let's get going. Here! Wait for us! Morning, sir. Oh, hello. Morton's group. Ten points being first answer. OK. Just a minute. Where's your fifth man? Or one short? Uh, Sounds like somebody's singing. Yeah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. I don't know how he did it. Harry wouldn't budge, and he wouldn't let the others come with me either. I thought it was unwise, but... Lucky for them, someone turned up anyway. What would you have done if they hadn't agreed to come with you? Never thought of it. Suppose Harry had said, get stuff. As a matter of fact, he did. <laughs> 